Hi guys, Steve Towers here. My theme's going to be about customer experience and customer service measurement. So buckle in, I'm going to talk about some case studies. I'm going to talk about some of the issues and challenges it presents us with. I'm going to give you some examples about how you can go forward. And of course, at the end of this session, you'll be able to download this material, get the deck, get some other resources as well. I spent about 50% of my time doing this stuff, so along the way, written a bunch of books about some of those experiences, winning an occasional award. Because I'm so involved in actually doing it, this is really coming from the front line. So in terms of the sort of organizations that we're going to be talking about, this is the network of people who are affiliates of the BP group, some of the people as are already in the room with you today. And we offer a whole range of training and consultancy services in around something we refer to as the CEM method, the customer experience management method. We've been around 30 odd years now. We're in something like 130, 140 countries around the world in terms of licensing to use the method. A lot of the foundation of what I'm going to talk to you about is based on organizations experience in terms of measurement, they're learning about it and so on. So not naturally, I'm going to be pulling on some of these people that you can see there at the moment and talking about their experience, how they've pushed the envelope further and how they're looking at customer service, customer experience measurement in a different way than an industrial age tradition. No way. Now, part of the industrial age traditional way is frustrating because it, it tends to measure what we're doing rather than necessarily what we're delivering. And from a customer's perspective, it's very important what we deliver. We refer to that delivery as a successful customer outcome. In terms of the, the challenges that people face, and here's just one example from last week of all times, where Tesla, let's put the name out there, have been over the years the top of net promoter score performance, if you like, across the particular industry. And yet, at the same time, people are experiencing increasing issues and an increasing uh, poor customer service as, as mapped through the number of complaints that they were receiving. So how could it be that they were being so successful with MPS across the rest of the industry, while at the same time, the number of complaints have been increasing? And last week, it was noted that people were gaming the system. What they were doing is they'd attach the MPS and customer satisfaction scores to bonus schemes. So hence, not surprisingly, the scores were going up. The scores were improving sort of month on month, quarter on quarter, and year on year, right? And as it says there, if you pay people for doing dumb stuff, they'll get really smart at it. And that's precisely part of Tesla's problem. But this goes back, this isn't like one incident. This goes back six or seven years. And there's reports that you can get through the links later on where they laid off a whole bunch of staff in finance and marketing for actually gaming the system and being very selective about who they asked and who they surveyed to actually produce the right results. We don't want that sort of behavior. We want the behavior that's going forward that really delivers successful customer outcomes. NPS has suffered to such an extent that even guys who invented the thing 20 years ago, Fred Reichschild with Bain & Co, are saying things like this, that people are gaming the system. And as we know, there's now NPS version 3, which is supposed to be about earned growth value, the actual value of a relationship with the customer. But it's still very linear, what we refer to as being inside out. It doesn't look at it from a customer's perspective. So how could we change that we don't want to be just putting lipstick on the pig we don't want to just be talking about how can we create a better customer perception we want to fundamentally fix what the root cause of these problems are and we want a measurement system that reflects that a measurement system that understands what we're really trying to achieve so with that in mind and i thought i'd give you a case study which underlines this need for better measurement this again comes from, it's a US case study. You're welcome to download it. I'll show you the materials later on. You'll be able to connect to the links and get this and show it around your organization just by way of an example. And this guy is a real guy. He's the one who submitted the case study to us. And since we published it, you can find it online in various places. But 
It's based around a US airport and what they were doing to get over this problem of an increasing number of customer complaints. So Andy, the nice guy who's responsible for this, he's really in the firing line, if you like, in terms of those customer complaints, because his department is geared around, oh, can we deliver a better customer service? What could we do? So let's focus on the problem areas. And one of the problem areas at the time was this long wait for bags. Once you've deplaned, once you've gone to the arrivals hall and you want to get your bag, it takes a long time before the bags actually arrive. So let's focus on that and let's see if we can improve it. So Andy did the right thing. He said, look, we've got to get these complaints down. It's affecting my team's morale. It's also affecting our bonuses. We're not getting one at the moment because complaints are increasing. So what could we actually do to change? change that situation. How can we fix this and make it go away? How can I get my key performance indicators in a better place? So with that in mind, Andy campaigned and won the argument to actually get more baggage handling people. Perhaps if we had more baggage handling people, we could process the bags quicker. They'll arrive on the carousels and hence the customers won't be complaining as vociferously. However, complaints still carried on rising. So as many organizations do, they thought what we should do is we should go out there and we should hire some experts who are good at this customer service measurement thing, right? And help us improve once and for all and get ourselves into a better place. So with that in mind, sure enough, they recruit some expensive consultants who are experts in the field and have proven they've helped other people get customer complaints down. How could they do that? So suggestion number one, part of the problem seems to be that when people arrive at the carousels, the bags take a long time to arrive. So if we increase the distance from the deplaning, so where they get off the plane, to when they arrive in the carousel's room, then wouldn't that be a better thing to do? Sure enough, what they do is the busier planes, the ones that seem to be engaging with the greatest number of complaints, they actually put that out in further away from the arrivals hall. That's remove number one. That should reduce the number of complaints because when people arrive, they will have to wait less long to get the bags. And idea number two, how's about this? It's then one of the reasons people seem to complain is the complaints desk is right by where the carousels are. Couldn't we move the complaints function to the other side of the arrivals hall Improve the signage. Yeah, we can do that. We can improve the signage and say, look, it's a 10 minute walk to get to the complaints desk. And wouldn't that dissuade people from complaining as much? So even if they still had a period of time to wait, they'd be less inclined to want to walk 10 minutes to the complaints desk and then 10 minutes back again. Yep, sure enough, that would reduce complaints. This is fantastic, isn't it? Our key performance indicators have started to improve now because we've done some relatively simple changes and in fact, the consultants get a pat on the back and they get their big payday. They've really helped with that key performance indicator in this context. And we are celebrating now as a team. We've smashed our targets. The KPIs are getting into a better place. That's all good news. And it's so much so, Andy gets his bonus. The team gets his bonus. And Andy can go to the beach and enjoy his pina colada or whatever and celebrate the success of improving his key performance indicators. However, meantime, what about the customer? So you've got longer uh, walks to actually get to the arrivals hall, right? If you are going to make a complaint, you've got a longer walk to get to the complaints desk. It's, it's, this is not achieving a successful customer outcome. And not surprisingly, though the number of complaints came down, that was their key performance indicator, right? People actually voted with their feet and started using other close-by U.S. airports, which is completely the contrary effect that the business wants to achieve in terms of increasing the number of customers, growing revenues, and delivering shareholder value. So our KPIs are a fundamental part of the problem here. Our KPIs are resulting in dissatisfied customers. So I'd like you to just think about that for a moment. Have a look at your measurements and think about your measurements. Are they inside out measuring the things we do 
or are they outside in measuring what we deliver? And that goes right the way down. Give you a couple of examples. Classically, call centres, average handle time, abandon rates. How much does the customer care about that? And in fact, does that contribute to a delivery of a successful customer outcome? Now, we know we need to have those measures because we need to understand the capacity, the utilisation rates, and all those other things that we need to do in contact centres. But at the same time, they should not be the most fundamental of measures. The fundamental measures should be the achievement of a successful customer outcome. Organisations who do this right win what we refer to as the triple crown. A measure of the success of that is they'll simultaneously improve service, reduce costs and grow revenues. We've got lots of examples of that so you can talk to me offline and I can give you that. So what we need to do is we need to shift from this industrial age measurement system like production line measures and move towards customer client centric measurement systems. So we need to de-emphasize the industrial age measures which tell us what our productivity is, how efficient and how effective we are towards measures which tell us we are delivering a successful customer outcome. And the CM method allows us to be able to do that. Also, there's some of the approaches that we've inherited from the past. And I'll hold my hand up here. Yeah, I'm a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt as well. I was an industrial engineer back in the day and did all that Lean, BPM, Six Sigma stuff. Nothing wrong with that as long as it's focused outside in and not inside out. So with that in mind, what we need to be starting to think about is moving away from these industrial age approaches. Look at, as precisely as Steve Jobs said 25 years ago, we've got to start with the customer and their experience and work backwards to the processes and the technology. In Amazon, they refer to that as working backwards. And if our measurement system is aligned to actually the delivery of customer success, we'll be in a better place. So the approaches we need to harness are the ones which tell us we're delivering a successful customer outcome. And then it's our responsibility in an organization and everybody involved to connect the dots and draw the lines between what we're doing and their customer's ultimate success. <laughs> so remembering this, if you pay people for doing dumb stuff, they will get really smart at doing the wrong things, not unnatural. Plenty of articles that talk about this challenge and this issue. Some on the page there, when you get the deck, click those links, it'll take you to them. But there's a groundswell now where organizations are understanding that their metrics and measurement system are still focused inside out. There's a particular thing I like to do with executive teams, if it's early days in terms of the encounter, is to get those guys to bring in their top 10 KPIs. So say you've got 10 folks around the table and we've got 100 KPIs, normalize them, so get rid of the duplicates, so say we end up with 80. And then do this red, amber, green thing, the rag analysis. Marking red, any measure which is a measure of doing something, an output measure, if you like. And marking green, anything which is a measure of the outcome that you achieve. Fairly typically, if an organization is not outside in, what you will find is that 80% of those measures are marked red. In other words, we're measuring the doing of things. Just an anecdotal tale that one of my colleagues, one of the founder of the BP Group, had a friend who works in investment banking. And a few years ago, asked me to get involved with them and go along and see if I could help them improve the morale of the team. And I said, investment banking, it's not like we just got a, an average contact center. These people are dealing with high net worth individuals. So they have to be really eloquent with customers and clients and so on. And the manager of this organization said, yeah, the problem is the morale's gone down. And it's not as though I don't emphasize the importance of the customer. So I go on a walk about with him. It's Wednesday morning and we're going around the, his building and he takes me into the contact center and he's talking to these really well-educated, very highly paid people. Guys, the customer is the most important thing to us. They pay our salaries. It's the reason why we're here. Yeah, do you get that? And they're going, mm, yeah. He said, look, see how demotivated they are. I go, yeah, yeah. He said, I really want you to focus on customer success. I want you to be there in the room in every conversation you're having with a customer. You're going to do that for me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we're going out of uh, lunch in the canteen 
And he says, oh, I can't leave it there. I've got to go back to them. I've really got to emphasize this importance of customer today because it's everything, isn't it? So we go back after lunch and he said, guys, I can't leave here. Look, we all know how important the customer is, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And we all know that we have to be doing the right thing for them every time. Yeah, that's right. And he said, so I want you in your next call to really focus on success for that customer. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we've got to get that average handle time down to less than 180 seconds. All right? Just drop the mic. Right? Because the measurement system is causing people to be doing and focusing on the wrong things. They're not focused on customer success. So how could we focus on customer success? There's this model that we use, and I'll share it with you when you get the deck later, called Successful Customer Outcomes. We have all the set of metrics that tell us precisely we're delivering customer success and we make that the key measure. We make those the key measures. And Amazon referred to it as North Star Alignment, where everybody in the organization is aware of where the North Star is. So with that in mind, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. As I've already said, you can download the material, you can access that material as well, the deck in the PDF form and the video. I'll share this video with you. Also, I talked about measurement systems going forward. So just in a minute or so on that, there's this thing we use called the CX-6. And it was pioneered by one of my colleagues, a guy called James Dawkins, also known as the CX rock star for the works that he does. And why is he a CX rock star? He used to be in a band, thrash metal band. He's got a band now, which is much more middle of the road, still metal, but much more middle of the road. But one of the things he developed and published in a book, Foundations for Customer Centricity, was a measurement system that came out of people like the Four Seasons Hotels and how they were measuring success. And interestingly enough, they measure 100% of interactions with the customers 100% of the time. So with that idea in mind, you'll be able to download that deck. It comes with a video, comes with a set of PDFs and stuff like that. Have a look at it. Tell me what you think. Connect with me. I'm on the BP group, stevetowers.com. Connect with me on LinkedIn. And we have a ton of resources that we can share with you with no obligation. So thanks very much, guys. I've enjoyed being with you today virtually. I'm actually here in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado at the moment. So yes, you can feel jealous. It's the middle of summer. Temperatures in the upper 20s. Every day, it's a lovely place to be. And I wish you all the best and no more snow. Get rid of that snow. Let's go for spring. Okay? Cheers, guys. Thank you very much.